Hello, my name is Alex and I am a biomedical scientist working in the NHS. Today I'm going to be talking to you about careers in biomedical science. Firstly, I'm going to begin this presentation by providing you with a background of the journey that I took leading to my career as a biomedical scientist. It all began with my interest in science at GCSE. I really enjoyed science, especially biology. However, I wasn't really sure which career pathway I wanted to take. I decided to pursue science further at college by completing A-levels in biology, chemistry and maths. At college, I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do as a career, but I then knew that my favourite type of science was human biology. Therefore, I applied to university to study biomedical science. Applying for university can seem quite overwhelming as many degrees sound very similar and it can be difficult to know which one would suit you best. I chose to study biomedical science over very similar options of biological science, biomedicine and biology because I knew that I found human disease and pathology the most interesting and I would like to specialise in that. In between the second and third year of my degree, I completed an industrial placement year in the NHS pathology laboratories. During this year, I trained as a biomedical scientist. After graduating from university, I successfully obtained a position as a biomedical scientist in the NHS. I believe that the experience gained during my placement year really helped to set me apart from other students and it definitely helped me when applying for jobs. If I could offer you one really important piece of advice, it would be to take as many opportunities as you can to gain practical experience in the workplace, whether that be voluntary work experience or as an industrial placement year. At this point, you may still be wondering, what exactly is biomedical science? Biomedical science can be described as the group of sciences used in healthcare to diagnose diseases. It's the broadest group of sciences in modern medicine and it's estimated that approximately 70% of diagnoses made in the NHS are based on biomedical investigations. Most hospitals in the UK will have a pathology laboratory where Biomedical scientists perform diagnostic investigations to help doctors to provide patients with a diagnosis and a relevant treatment. Biomedical science regularly appears in the news as new discoveries are being made every day to help improve the healthcare system. Most commonly, we hear about new advances in cancer diagnostics or the discovery of new biomarkers. However, recently, we've all been hearing a lot about coronavirus testing. Some of you may even have had the swab test or the antibody test performed. When you had the test performed, did you ever wonder how your result was identified or who actually performed the analysis? Well, this is where biomedical scientists come in. Biomedical scientists typically work within the pathology department of a hospital. However, the role of a biomedical scientist can vary significantly depending on which pathology discipline they decide to specialise in. In the NHS, the pathology disciplines are typically separated into four main departments that all perform very different investigations. Let's start with haematology and transfusion science. This department receives blood samples which are investigated for blood disorders such as anemia or leukemia. They are also responsible for cross-matching patient blood types before a life-saving transfusion will take place. Next, we have biochemistry. Typically, this department will receive blood or urine samples for investigation of biomarkers or metabolites. Toxicology and immunology investigations also take place within biochemistry. Then we have the microbiology department who are super busy at the moment analysing the swab test for the coronavirus. The microbiology department investigates samples that show signs of infection. 
Typically, they'll investigate bacterial, viral, fungal and parasitic infections. The final discipline is cellular pathology. This department receives a whole range of specimens from all sites of the body for the investigation of cells under the microscope. Specimens can range from tiny biopsies to whole organs or even whole bodies for post-mortem investigation. Typically, a patient's diagnosis will require investigations from all four pathology disciplines. I personally specialise in cellular pathology, so over the next few slides, I'm going to take you through the work that I do as a biomedical scientist to help patients receive their diagnosis. To give you a bit more of an insight into my role, I'm going to talk you through a patient case study. So firstly, a patient presents with severe abdominal pain. A radiology scan suggests that the patient has an enlarged appendix and it needs to be removed before it bursts as this could lead to sepsis. The appendix is removed during surgery, but then it is sent to the cellular pathology department for investigation. It is important that all organs or samples are investigated by a doctor to confirm the presence or absence of any diseased cells. A sample can't simply go into the bin once it has been removed from the patient, it always must be investigated further. Once the appendix has arrived at the cellular pathology laboratory, a doctor will dissect the specimen sampling any areas of tissue that look abnormal or that could help to make a diagnosis. Then, small pieces of tissue will be sampled and preserved in a wax block. Very thin sections will then be cut from the wax block containing the appendix tissue. The sections are just four micrometers thick, which is thinner than a single strand of hair. The sections will contain cells from the appendix. However, at this stage, they would appear colourless under the microscope. Therefore, it's important that the cells are stained so that a doctor can look at them to make a diagnosis. Once the cells are stained, the appendix can be visualised under the microscope by a doctor and a diagnosis can be made for the patient and often this can be used to inform their treatment pathway. Here are some examples of appendix as it would appear down the microscope after being processed in the cellular pathology department. Biomedical scientists work very closely with doctors in this department to produce microscope slides that can be used to make a diagnosis. The same process occurs for all different types of specimens and it takes a minimum of 48 hours from start to finish. Hopefully by now I have convinced you just how great biomedical science is and you are wondering, how could I become a biomedical scientist? Well, the most common and fastest route to becoming a biomedical scientist is to complete A-levels in biology and or chemistry and to have at least a GCSE in maths. Then you must go to university to complete a degree in biomedical science. It is important that your degree is accredited by the Institute of Biomedical Science to ensure that it covers all of the skills and knowledge that you will need to become a qualified biomedical scientist. You must also complete a registration portfolio whilst working in the laboratory to demonstrate that you have the practical skills and knowledge to become a competent biomedical scientist. Many universities provide the opportunity to complete hospital placements in the NHS. This is really useful as it helps you to gain practical laboratory experience and you can gather evidence for your portfolio. However, if this route doesn't sound like something that would suit you, it's possible to become a biomedical scientist via alternative routes such as an apprenticeship. I have included this slide to summarise some of the personal qualities that I think make a good biomedical scientist. It's really important that you can be methodical, 
logical and scientifically minded whilst also having a good understanding of human diseases. Biomedical scientists work as part of a multidisciplinary team with doctors, surgeons and nurses. Therefore, it's really important that you can communicate effectively. Finally, I think the most important quality is that you want to make a difference. All pathology samples have a patient waiting anxiously behind them to try and find out their test result. As biomedical scientists, we are integral to the patient pathway and it is often the pathology result that is necessary to determine the best treatment for the patient. This presentation has focused on the role of a biomedical scientist. However, a degree in biomedical science could lead to a whole range of career pathways, not just working in a laboratory. For example, have you ever thought about teaching? Maybe you enjoy biomedical science, but you don't want to work in a laboratory. Well, perhaps you could share your knowledge with other generations and teach instead. Alternatively, you might decide that you want to travel and you want a career that will take you all over the world. Perhaps a career in the armed forces might suit you better. Army men and women need pathology investigations performing when they feel unwell. Biomedical scientists are recruited into the armed forces to perform these investigations. There are so many careers available within the discipline of biomedical science and this is just a small snapshot. Many more can be found online and at career services. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope that I've helped you to understand the role of biomedical scientists in the healthcare system and how you could enter a career yourself in biomedical science. If you have any questions, please feel free to email the STEM Ambassador Hub I'm more than happy to try and help with any of your queries. Thank you.